What's up guys and welcome to another video. Finally, this is the most asked for feature ever and I want to thank the guys that created this uh, Alexa Pi uh, incarnation that we are using because they have made an update recently. <coughs> Excuse me. Those of you that have caught my live stream where I built an Alexa Pi on my live stream will know that we use the updated version. Now, the updated version, the cool part about it is, yes, it does allow it to remember your Amazon settings. So basically what that means is you can now write scripting to auto start your Alexa Pi on boot, which means that when you reboot your Alexa Pi or you just power off your Raspberry Pi and power it back on, it will automatically start the Alexa Pi software, basically. You don't have to log back in. You can click remember settings um, and it will allow you to log back in. Okay, so one, so basically you go through the setup like we normally do. So you can watch my video. I'll probably put a card or something somewhere around here. And um, you can check out the original Alexa Pi video. Now on the part where you log in, where you get the web page and you have to log in, you just log in and you'll check, remember my settings. Okay, and when you check that, then it will automatically, it'll keep your login information and it will automatically log into your Amazon account and start this up. Okay. So what I'm going over today in this video is we are going to look at how to set up the shell script, number one, and number two, how to get it to auto start. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I am VNC to my Pi. Um, you can probably set all of this up in uh, a terminal session like SSH or something, but I would recommend you either plugging into a TV and putting keyboard in uh, or um, doing like doing this, setting up a VNC on it and VNC to it uh, to, to set this up. So that way you make sure and see if it actually starts. You will still get um, the, the Java runtime program that has a little microphone on it. You'll still get that when you uh, start it up. So... Um, a good way to make sure that everything is running correctly. Of course, I mean, you can always plug it in and see what happens um, and see if it'll respond to you. But a definitive way is to have VNC to it the first couple of times you do this just to make sure it's going to start every time. Okay, so now, first off, what I want to do is let me click in here in my VNC session. All right, so first things first, we need to create a shell script. Now, what I did was I just in my home directory created a script called Alexa Startup dot s h okay so what we're gonna do is in fact i don't even need sudo i'm just gonna vi that i like vi or vim whatever vi improved you can use nano whatever you want to use it's totally fine so we're gonna look at the startup script now this is not too different from the startup script i've originally wrote um however i did add some delay in there as you can see so let me see if hopefully this is big enough for you guys um Oh my goodness, I pushed it off the screen. I want to make sure you guys can see it. Uh, watch my video here too so I don't get it in the way of the casting video. But basically what we do is I just put some echo so you get some feedback. Um, since we're going to auto start this, probably isn't needed, but eh, I put it in there anyway. So I'm saying starting companion service. So here is the command CD to whatever CD to that deal and then add the ampersand to start it. Okay, so the ampersand is key because what that does is that causes it to run this in the background and it basically throws it over to the process uh, scheduler. So it schedules it and gives it a process ID and Bob's your uncle, it works. So then what I did was for testing purposes, I did this starting companion service and I uh, basically sent it to a dot out file. And then I uh, basically do that on each one. It's not needed. You could probably comment that out or just leave that out. I did that just to see if that file was even getting written to see if it was even executing. Okay. So those are little tips and tricks, you know, to see if something, if you're doing something automated uh, and you want to know if it's actually running or whatnot, you don't want to have to do the PS aux and try to grep for it and all that crap. Just 
put in there to create a file or something or throw some data to a file or something like that because you know if it's auto starting it's not going to throw it to a terminal you don't have a terminal running to see it but you can always throw it out to a file and then ssh into your box or whatever and see if that file exists and see if the data got written to it properly so that's that's a debugging technique you really don't need this line or or really this line or even this line like i said i was just debugging it to make sure each one of those processes actually started since it's all automated i don't know why that keeps doing that all right so basically what we do is from there i then sleep for five seconds that's what the sleep command is is it delays it does not run anything after that command for five seconds. I noticed that if I did not have any delays in here, this thing would just blast through and basically the cart would get before the horse and it would run the wake word agent before the Java runtime client was ready and then it would get weird and get all kinds of errors. And I think we saw that in my live stream video. If you made it to the end of the video, that's what I uh, that's that's what we were trying out. We were kind of trying to get this to work and uh, I, I just ran out of time and so, um, Anyway, it was it was it was all it was all jumbled up. So you need delay. So the next thing is we start the uh, Java client, okay? And so we start that up. Now this one takes a while because it has to authenticate and do all of its, you know, magic getting into Amazon. And like I said, again, if the first time that you uh, set up your Raspberry Pi, I suggest running all these commands manually. So that way you can type in your password, your login information to Amazon uh, um, developer and all that stuff. You type all that stuff in. And then um, once you type that all in the first time, it should save it all as long as you're using the latest, um, the latest and greatest uh, uh, Amazon Alexa uh, basically software uh, that is listed again in that original video that I show. If you, if you take that same link that's in that video and go there, um, he has the latest version already posted. So you just download it. And the way to install it is exactly the same. Um, my live stream showed that too. It looks like somebody's waving at me. Hello. So yeah, so check out that video. And uh, that'll let you I'll have the links in it and whatnot. I'll still put the link down here. You know, I'll put it in this video too. But just follow that along and it should work um, just fine. You know, it should install just fine. I did it live um, on the live stream and it worked just great. So once you get that all set up, now you can then start running your script because then everything will be saved. All of the stuff will just log in immediately. And I will show you for we are going to run it together. So I'm going to go ahead and run the script just to show you, um, the output that comes up and show you that the timing does work. Now you may have to adjust the timing, literally how I picked those two times in here, the 25 seconds, Literally how I picked that was I literally ran each one of these commands individually and waited for it to stop uh, spitting out information. Like when you run the command, it spits out the information saying that it's starting and that it's listening and all that stuff. I literally just counted one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, literally just counted the seconds, you know, and then rounded up a bit, added three or four seconds after you know, it looked like it was done. You know, if I got to like, I think I got to like 21 seconds. So I just was like, ah, eh, 25 seconds. We'll add four more just to be safe. So you guys might be different if you're using a slower, uh, uh, SD card, if you have a slower, maybe internet connection or something like that, the timing might be different. So you can't, you know, you, you have to tweak things. So don't just think that you can download this, this shell script, because I'll post this, this, I'll link down there. We'll, we'll post this shell script that it's just going to run bang on your, on yours and just work exactly the same as mine. My, my setup is different. I've got a, uh, one of the, let's see, I think it's 92 Mbps or something like that. Uh, SD cards in there. Uh, it's like one of the ultras, scan disk ultras or whatever. And then I've also got, um, my Wi-Fi network is like one of those wireless N networks, except I think it's only connected, uh, wireless G or something like that. I don't know. So it's, but it's 54 megabits per second. I have a pretty fast internet connection. I've got like hundred Mbps, uh, internet connection and things like that. So my setup might be different than yours. So make the adjustments if you need to, I would totally go in there and run each command separately and, and use a stopwatch or do like I did and just count one, 1,000, two, 1,000 until you figure out a good time that you're safe, that everything is started and good. And then, and then, uh, uh, change it, change it up. So anyway, Having said that, let's go ahead and run this bad boy. So let's do uh, our dot slash Alexa. Oops, helps if I can spell. Alexa start up. Now, starting companion service. Okay, so there we go. And so you see it scroll, and then now it's done. So now it's going to start the Java. It waited five seconds. 
This is the one that's taking about 25 seconds to start. So we'll wait for this. And as you can see, scanning the projects, yada, yada, yada. There it goes. There it goes. And I should get that little pop-up here in a minute. Come on. 25 seconds is a lot longer than you think it is. There's the pop-up. And then see, successfully received. And then boom, there it goes. It ran the wake word agent. So now it's all up and running. All right. Fabu. So now we should be able to holler at Alexa. Hopefully my microphone might pick her up. Alexa. What time is it? The time is 6, 12 p.m. Woohoo! All right. So see, works like a charm. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to uh, start this puppy, okay, in in uh, during boot. And I have tried literally every way. I mean, it was literally like process of elimination. Uh, I tried it in the init D, tried to do an init D script. That didn't work. Tried to do a cron reboot. That did not work. I tried everything, and I was just about to give up when I found it. And I found it. And what all Raspberry Pis have, or at least the latest version, the Jesse that's what I'm running. The Jesse, in fact, I could name dash A. Uh, there we go. 4924 is what I'm running. So 4924 currently is the, the kernel revision that I'm running. And it is the Raspbian Jesse. Okay. All of them <clears throat> have this. Um, it's basically the desktop environment, the LXDE or whatever uh, desktop environment. You're going to set in the auto start. Um, to start this up. So I've already done that, but I've commented it out uh, so I could start it here. So where this is located is just in your Pi user. Okay, you're going to CD to dot config. Okay, and then inside there, you're going to CD to the LX session. Okay, and inside there, they're the only other folders, the LXDE for the user Pi. So CD to that. LXDE Pi. And then inside there, there is the auto start script. Okay, that's where we're going to add our script to. Okay, so VI, the auto start script. All right, and see, I have commented it out, but there at the bottom, there it is. Now, you want to use the full path of where it is. And since it was in my home folder, the path to your home folder is slash home, slash pi, and then slash the name of your script. You don't have to name it Alexa Startup. You can name it something else if you want to. I just decided to name it Alexa Startup. But I'm going to go ahead and take the, the, the pound symbol out of that. Okay. And that way it will, re, it will start. And all you got to do is then just save that. I'm going to do a right quit because I'm using VI. Um, so I'm going to save that. And you're actually good to go. That's all you need to do. Oh, wait. One more thing. One more thing. Um, if you create the script yourself... <coughs> excuse me, create the script yourself or um, you download mine, um, chances are the permissions may not be the same. You want to make sure that you've got execute, that the little X is there. Now, if you don't, an easy way to do that is, well, get, go, stop, stop it, stop, stop it, stop it. All right, fine. I know how to do this. There we go. All right. So <laughs> the uh, if you want the uh, uh, execute, you want to do a pseudo, whoop, udo sudo change mod plus x okay that adds execute and then the name of your startup the name of your uh startup okay that's all you do and you hit enter and then if it wasn't there previously you'll have the execute on there that's all you need you just need to add execute uh, privileges to it. Oh, and make sure that it is under the Pi user because since we edited the the LX uh, session auto start under our Pi, we CD to dot config from our Pi home directory, then it will actually execute it as the Pi user. So if you have like root root, that was one of my problems is I, I built this uh, under root because I thought maybe it had to be root because I was trying to do it as cron and all that other stuff. If it is uh, the user is root or, or the owner is root and the group is root, then uh, if you add this like I just did under the Pi user, it won't execute because you have to be root to have permission to, to, to do that, I believe. Because that wasn't now, even though I had put the global X on there, which means anybody can execute this, I don't know. It, it it would it wouldn't it wouldn't work right. So I suggest putting it pi pi. And if you have that problem, the command for that is change owner, and you just say pi colon pi. 
first pi is the owner and then colon the next one is then the uh group okay so i do pi pi and then the uh your startup script your startup script that's all you do to change the change the owner and whatever so that's all you got to do to do that so let's reboot and we'll see what happens now when we reboot we should see basically this pop up all on its own it should be there when i vnc back to this guy because when i reboot it's gonna you know kill my vnc session but i should see this which tells me that it is working okay so here we go so let's shut whoops sudo shut down r now this will reboot it which kills my vnc session so i'm going to close that we're gonna wait for a little bit. Um, you could ping it, you know, ping with the dash T. However, for some reason, the microphone kind of goes when it's uh, restarting, and when it does that twice, I know that it's rebooted. <laughs> I've 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 done this a couple of times. <laughs> there it is. I heard it go. Okay, I bet you it's working now. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna attempt to VNC to this puppy. Hey, there we go. All right. Get this now i vnc'd pretty fast oh hello there so we're gonna give it a moment to get going oh there it is all right so it looks as though it auto started now let's test it out alexa Maybe wake word hasn't started yet. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 6.18 p.m. Woohoo! All right, so there you go, guys. So there it is. That's how you do it. Very simple. In fact, how, how long have we gone? It hasn't been very long, has it? All right. Um, there you go. That's how you do it. So that is how you auto start your Alexa pie <laughs> i have to say it quietly otherwise she'll catch me and then it'll get weird and yeah all that stuff so that's how you you auto start it it's it's actually it actually is fairly simple it's just i had to go through like a lot of process of elimination to get to yeah at this point so anyway all right guys that's it that's all i wanted uh like i said this was the most requested uh, video so please share this video like subscribe share all that stuff, but definitely share this because I know a ton of people, there's a ton of people that want to know how to do this, want to know how to auto start the service. I, I don't know how many comments I got on the original video of how do you auto start this? There's probably no way to auto start this. And, and there wasn't until now. Now there is. So guys, thank you very much for all the support and everything on the channel. We're about to crack eight thousand subscribers. To me, that's just wild. So Thank you so much for the support and for the continued support. And uh, please, uh, like I said, please share this, um, like it, uh, subscribe definitely so you don't miss out on anything. And those of you that don't know, you need to watch this week's Maker Monday because I'm doing a contest. You could win a cool widget. I'm not going to even say what it is. You got to go. You got to go watch it. Maybe I'll throw a card up or something. But you got to go watch it, and so that way you can enter the contest because the rules and how to enter the contest is in this week's uh, Maker Monday. So go check that out and uh, enter that contest and whatnot. We also are going to be doing another live stream uh, coming in the, hopefully the next couple of weeks or so. I'll do another live stream. And guys, with that, I think that ought to do it. We will see you next time.